Hey guys, welcome back to another live trading video. I'm going to be jumping into a trade here on the S&P 500. Hey guys, welcome back to another live trading video. I'm going to be jumping into a trade here on the S&P 500. I see some stuff that looks interesting to me. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, as usual, I'm going to film this trade in front of you guys, start to finish. Whether it is a winner or loser, I'll be sharing it to YouTube. Uh, I think it's important to show losers and winners when it comes to trading because there is a lot of glamour out there, but the reality of trading is that it's not always pretty. So hopefully you get some sort of value from these videos. If you enjoy that, if you want to see more of this sort of content, do me a favor and smash that like button down below. It shows YouTube that you want to see more of this content and it lets me know that you actually enjoy it and uh, it's helpful enough for me to continue making this stuff. So with that said, the S&P 500, uh, lots of bearishness here. And this is really interesting because when the market does this, I have a tendency to look for sell setups on the shorter timeframes. Now, what I mean by that is long term, the S&P 500 tends to go up. So I don't really want to be in a short trade for months and months and months. Although, you know, if you caught the right move, that might be huge. Uh, I'm, for the most part, it's going to be tough to try and calculate or time out when that's going to happen. So for me, I leave the timing to people who maybe are magicians or something. And I just look for momentum and I try and follow along with the direction of the move. Now, what we're looking at here on the daily chart is that we actually had this nice run up here on the upswing, but then we started to see this downfall. And what I really like here is that if you notice this 20 period moving average, simple uh, technical factor that a lot of people are looking at, we've actually closed underneath it a few candles here. We, we saw the close here. We tried to rebound and then very quickly sellers took back control. I like that dominance from sellers. And I think that gravity is going to pull this market more to the downside. Now, that is not just uh, you know speculation. Although it is, it is just a, a prediction that I am making. It's based on some probabilities that I think give us a pretty good chance of seeing this market continue. Now, first off, a lot of times when we see this market move in momentum, there is some sort of follow through, right? We've noticed that. Uh, we've talked about that on the channel. So I am looking to get short, hopefully to see a move down to this level here, and perhaps even a move down to the 200-day moving average. So with that said. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send out an alert to the VIP members. If you're not already a member, you can find out information in the description. I share all of my trades and analysis in real time with members inside of the group. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll go share that and I'm going to show you guys some of the lower time frames as I take a trade. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, and there we are. We are short on the S&P 500. Let me pull this up, show you guys the trade that I just sent out to members inside of the group. Uh, so I said uh, S&P 500 short setup. I'm getting short here at the current levels, joining momentum and anticipating a break of the support level that we're looking at. Uh, if I'm current, if I'm correct about this, I'll trail stops and update from here. Uh, if I am wrong, I will stop out of the trade above the recent swing high for a small loss. So I'm looking for this momentum to continue and anticipating this this. Uh, support level to actually break because I think it's actually kind of a, a weak support. We'll talk about that now. So we've got this momentum shifting in our direction here. And I like the one hour chart to clarify a little bit about uh, this current move. Now, it's sort of a short term trade here. This is actually more short term than I usually like to take. But I like to keep things very, very tight when it comes to trading these indices because they can snap back and change directions very quickly. And if that is the case, then I will go ahead and stop out of the trade here. So the reason I chose this is from today price action, this was the high of this morning's rally. So when that rally happened and we started to see the failure, uh, that's where I decided, okay, I'd like to get short if we can make a move back towards the lows. We're not quite at the lows. The lows are all the way down here, but I do still like the idea of anticipating that break and that move continued lower. So with that said, this is where my stop is at. We are looking for that, uh, that point up there to be the signal of, okay, we were wrong about this trade. And from there, we can actually use uh, the Fibonacci tool that everybody always asks me about. I'm going to explain as I usually do. So this is just a normal Fibonacci tool on MetaTrader 4. If I go to the Fibonacci properties, here it is, the different levels, 1R, 2R, so on and so forth. So this is this highlights my initial entry point, right? I put that there. I also know where my stop loss is now. 
And the reason I do this is that if the market does move and I end up trailing my stops, I like to see where I am, where my initial risk was. So this is kind of like a placeholder. So with that said, I am currently short here. We'll see if this market wants to do its thing. If it does, we will stay in the trade. And if it doesn't, then uh, we'll just get right out of there. All right, guys, so the market here moved in my favor. I'm actually on the phone with Frank because Frank caught the same trade. Uh, let me just really quick pull it up. You can actually see that Frank shared a similar analysis here today on the S&P 500. Uh, Frank, how are you feeling about this right now? Um, I don't know. That big gap down, I think it says something. Usually in the past like couple days, we saw like really small gaps, but this was... This was uh, very sizable. I, I did not expect it to dump like this. But what I did notice, something like really cool, we, we just talked about it, but to like clarify, if you go on the daily chart, yep. and you scroll out, and you look at, what day is that? Uh, it is, it? yeah, it's the, it's February, February 21st. 21st. Yep, that's it. <laughs> this is a weird pattern. It, it, it is so strange. There on February 21st and opens at this level. Um, right. On the next day, you see it close pretty much in the same spot. Yeah, and I'll and I'll today. for those those who can and see when the we thing. at six, it opened in that same area. Yeah, so you can actually see it gap down back in the initial crash in 2020 at the same like price level as it is right now, which is really, really interesting. Uh, but yeah, on the one hour chart, let me just update you guys. I just took a, uh, or I just moved my stop here to break even on the trade, uh, but it's looking like pretty soon I'm gonna be able to lock in one R on this trade. I think Frank's following a similar thing. He got in at slightly a better price than me, uh, but we did technically just hit two R. So what I can do is at this point, move my stop up here to one R. Uh, my fear here that I mentioned to Frank is that I'm afraid that price could come back to fill that gap. But at this point, I'm not in the game of speculation. I'm in the game of letting this momentum play out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trail my stop up to one R here and uh, lock in some profit. I think Frank will probably do the same and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'll be back soon with an update for you guys on this trade on the S&P short. Meanwhile. That's what you have to put in. To stay. I just wanna yeah, let you guys know that Carlo's the ultimate bluffer. <laughs> All right, guys, and I just moved my stop up there, locking in a pretty good 1R. So if you remember, let me zoom back in for just a moment. If we zoom in here on the 15 minute chart and the 30 minute chart actually would probably be better. 30 minute chart, here was my initial trade. I got short here looking for that momentum to continue. Fortunately, Frank and myself were both correct about this and we did get some momentum continuation here today. Uh, we saw the dip and we wanted to actually be a part of the sellers. A lot of times everybody says, you know, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. But recently we've been stretched quite a bit to the upside and Frank and I both had this idea that, okay, probably due for a little bit more correction than people are anticipating. And a lot of people are just jumping in, buying the dip right away. So we got short and uh, there's our initial stop loss. Uh, my stop was just above structure here. Well, fortunately, price continued in our direction. So at this point, I've been able to move my stop from break even and then very shortly after, because of this gap down here after hours, uh, moved my stop up into the 1R profit. So what that means is that one times my initial risk, what my initial risk was, we've actually already locked in in profit. So the worst thing that can happen here is now price could come back and fill that gap and I would just go ahead and take a profit there. So it's not too bad of a situation. Never mind being in this uh, state. This is kind of the cool part about trading is when you have a trade that's locked in and you can see how it goes. Best case scenario would be if price decides to roll over here into the Asian session. We just got done with the New York session, but we'll see what we can get. We're not going to be greedy. We're just going to See what the market says. If it goes up, we'll stop out there. If it goes down, we'll look to continue to trail stops and see what this trade wants to give us. So uh, I'll be back soon with an update, win or loss. We'll see how this thing goes. All right, you ready? 
go. Petition All right, and fortunately, I was able to get out of this trade with a nice profit here. That makes our second win on SPX 500 in the last uh, few days, which is awesome. So we caught more of the downside here, as we mentioned, going for that momentum continuation. Uh, fortunately, you, as you heard, Frank caught some of the same moves, so we were both able to profit off of this. And I know a whole bunch of other members were jumping in on the short side as well. I think they uh, must have agreed with the analysis. So things worked out really nicely here on SPX 500. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get more out of it, but I'm not going to be greedy. I'm just going to take what the market gave me. So let's recap what actually ended up happening. So uh, price was in a strong downward momentum situation. I wanted to get short and so I was looking for failure. We actually were watching the chart here as price came up off of this kind of downtrend, downtrend, downtrend. We saw the, the sharp rise there, but what's, uh, what's interesting is it was met with some sharp rejection and that's where I ended up getting short. So I anticipated that price was gonna come right down and continue. I was incorrect about that, but fortunately my stop was in a good spot because uh, we ended up getting short. Price went against us for a little bit here. We trailed up, uh, looked like I was gonna get stopped out, but fortunately this resistance level that we had uh, put our stop above worked out beautifully and held uh, just as we had hoped for. So price breaks through to the downside. In fact, we held it here at this point. This was our entry again, so at this point we were in profit. But then the cool thing is that this market gapped lower here at the start of the Asian session, putting us in in a very nice profitable situation. And as many of you guys may know by watching my strategy for a while now, at this point, when we hit that 2R mark, I basically said, okay, now I'm gonna lock in some profit. So price moved from my initial, or my stop loss moved from my initial stop loss here down to break even when we hit, or technically when we uh, broke down, it passed right above the 1R. But at this point, when we hit 2R, I went ahead and moved my stop all the way up here and locked locked in 1R on the trade. So not the biggest win in the whole wide world, don't get me wrong, I'm not here to say this is you know a record-breaking, amazing short sell, but it was a pretty solid trade and we were able to take some profit out of the market, which is always a nice thing. So what ended up happening is that after we gapped down, uh, unfortunately for our sell position, we started to just kind of chug back up, uh, ended up getting stopped out there for a 1R take profit, which in my view is not bad at all. I'm happy to take that. Um, and so if this market continues to go down or starts moving up, we'll look for momentum and potentially to trade this again. So if you're not already a member of the A1 trading community, come check us out, see if it's interesting to you. If you'd like to come trade with myself and the rest of our analysts, as you saw, Frank took the same trade. We're always discussing and talking about trades that we are taking in real time. So come join us, come trade with us, try it out and uh, we'll see you in there. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back in the next video.